So without, without further ado, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to queue up uh, Jim Cullen, who uh, is the Scroll Program Manager at Bits for Scroll. And uh, so there you go. OK. <clears throat> Thanks, Ed. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jim Cullen, uh, Program Manager. and. Uh, Jack of all trades as it comes to uh, product management, strategic planning, et cetera, for bits of scroll. I'll try to go through this quickly to keep to the points that Ed asked me to speak about. Uh, basically, a little bit about the Bitzer Group, our history here in Syracuse, a couple of the products that we make, and uh, our R&D direction and needs. Uh, the group, uh, uh, as evidenced by our uh, slogan in advertising, is uh, our products are everywhere, but you can't see them. Uh, we do a lot of cooling and compression for products that a lot of people just don't see but uh, surround the space with, uh, with comfort. Uh, last year our group is about 3,000 employees, about 10% in the U.S. Uh, sales uh, a little over 630 million euro, a little over 800 million. Uh, we're on a pace now of, of roughly double digit growth uh, trying to get to a billion uh, euro turnover within the uh, within the next uh, three years. Um, and this is uh, where, where we're located now. We have about 35 facilities and 13 factories uh, around the world, Syracuse being, being one of them. Um, the markets we serve, uh, we are a manufacturer of refrigerant compressors, so you can imagine what we, what we produce uh, cools things, whether it's uh, industrial processes, uh, which Bitzer is very well known for, particularly in Europe and Asia. Uh, refrigeration is probably our marquee uh, product, everything from big cold storage warehouses with open drive ammonia compressors to smaller uh, compressors using refrigerant gas and variable speed compressors. Uh, particularly in the transportation industry, uh, we're the largest supplier now of integrated inverter compressors used in uh, marine containers. Uh, we also are big in uh, coaches and buses. And where we're targeting now uh, more and more focus is commercial buildings, particularly in the U.S. The U.S. is an underserved market within Bitzer. We're targeting uh, large buildings, commercial buildings, and institutional structures, primarily with the scroll compressor, uh, which is what I'm here to talk about. So the kind of products that we make are uh, conventional technologies. We call them the piston compressors. Uh, we have a various ranges of screw compressors. Uh, now more and more we have electronics integrated into our products and uh, we have a division that manufactures electronics uh, both for integrated frequency inverters within products or to create uh, solutions, condensing units, refrigerated uh, trailer units. Uh, and then what we do here in Syracuse is scroll compressors. We are the only design center outside of Germany for scroll compressors. All the other design centers are within Germany at the headquarters or in Denmark for our electronics division. So uh, this happened because of the talent that was in the area and the ability of uh, some of my predecessors to convince some of them to leave their employers at the time and start up a venture. And uh, that's why I'm here now is a result of some people who took a chance to start something new. Uh, so that happened in 2006. Uh, three gentlemen uh, left Carrier and started out and worked for uh, almost a month without a paycheck. And they finally got a paycheck and they uh, started to put together a design for a compressor uh, that we first started producing here in the old General Motors plant. Uh, these, this is the timeline from uh, late 2006 to uh, 2009 when we delivered our first compressors to, uh, to the market. Uh, recently, we've just moved, though, uh, just a little bit down the road, uh, and uh, I feel like I'm a, a poster child for all of the development work going on in the area because we've repurposed an existing facility uh, with existing infrastructure. We're able to get a good building on the cheap and turn it into a facility that we needed for our, our uh, use. Uh, this building now uh, sports the Bitzer logo on the outside. Uh, the layout of the building is ideally suited for uh, the way we want to produce products. Uh, the, the former facility was like a bowling alley and it was very inefficient in terms of material logistics and the Bitzer uh, production system. So since uh, the end of January, we've been at uh, Court Street Road 
and uh, this is uh, most of us here in the building uh, before we shipped our first compressors out. We did the entire move in two weeks. Took down every machine, picked up every piece of furniture, moved it over and started up and, and exactly two weeks later we were uh, shipping compressors again. So uh, our facilities team did a phenomenal job to be able to make that basically a seamless transition. Uh, what we make here is a series of uh, refrigerant compressors. Uh, we speak in terms of either tons of refrigeration or horsepower, depending on what part of the world we're talking, uh, talking to. The, the product that we are making right now is what we call our Orbit 8, which is a large commercial compressor used in uh, large uh, water-cooled chillers, for instance. And that goes from uh, 15 horsepower to, to 40 tons. We're just now introducing a smaller range, which we call our Orbit 6, which is a, a model from uh, 10 to 20 horsepower. And I'll just show you briefly a little bit about what it is. This is last year in Italy. Uh, the Moster Convenio is one of the largest uh, uh, expositions in Europe for heating and refrigeration technology. Uh, in some ways, uh, much more innovative than what we see uh, in the US at the ASHRAE and uh, AHR Expo. Uh, a lot more integration of hybrid systems. You see uh, heat pumps and solar, uh, solar heating systems integrated together. A lot more combinations of technologies than maybe what we see here in the U.S. Uh, but this is where we first introduced uh, our smallest product. So here you see piston compressors, some of our larger screw compressors, and basically anything from 10 up to 300 tons could be done now with our scroll compressors that we build here in, in Syracuse. Uh, just briefly on the, on the technology here, I don't want to get too deep into it because of the time, but uh, one of the key innovations uh, in, in what we were able to do here is the smart people in the area came up with an idea for uh, the Oldham coupling, which is this uh, aluminum piece in here. The Oldham coupling is what translates the rotary motion of the motor into an orbital path for the compressor to compress the gas. And most of the competitors use a keying system that makes the, the orbiting scroll very wide, and that defines the geometry of the product, the size of the can, the size of the castings, a lot of the material you need. What our guys did were able to come up with a design that, that changes the way that coupling is, uh, is designed and, and constructed to make it very stiff, but also to reduce the diameter of the orbiting path. And then that shows up very dramatically for instance, here are two, our 20 ton, our 40 ton, anywhere from 16% lighter to 15% uh, lighter. And when you put these together in tandem or trio packages, you can end up with some pretty substantial weight savings. Uh, in the case of a chiller or a rooftop unit, that's an important consideration. From a manufactured standpoint, the less material is less cost. And without getting into a New York diatribe here, you know, it's not the cheapest place to do business, so we're looking for every little little opportunity to save money, whether it's reducing the amount of material in the product or reducing the amount of labor content that it takes to assemble the product. Those are the kind of things that we're doing here in, uh, in Syracuse. Uh, and this is just one dramatic example of the new product we're releasing in terms of its size relative to some of the competitive products that are, that are out there. Uh, so we need smart people. We're looking for a pipeline of uh, of talent to help translate ideas and those innovations into products. Um, Syracuse is not known for having as uh, uh, advanced um, co-op program as some of the other universities, but uh, we're looking through the COE to, uh, to uh, get some uh, pipeline for talent, particularly some of the advanced theoretical stuff that we're going to need in developing uh, the next generation of compressors. Uh, in terms of energy savings and what we do, one of our innovations is designing uh, compressors that operate with different pressure ratios. Uh, in different types of air conditioning systems, you're either condensing against the air or into a water-cooled uh, water tower. And so you have different operating uh, pressure ratios, and you can save energy by designing compressors for specific conditions. The trade-off is that they're not general purpose. Uh, if you make a purpose-built compressor, it can be very efficient, but then it's not as flexible. So we're trying to balance one-size-fits-all compressor with purpose-built compressors. Uh, and the opportunity is to be fast, to be custom, to be unique, 
It, uh, it, it saves you from being a commodity product and fighting against everyone else in the world. Uh, and if you're fast and innovative, you can, uh, you can make better, better margins on that. So these are the kinds of things that we do, the kinds of technologies we're going to be looking for are engineers that can help us design these kinds of products to operate under different conditions with different pressure ratios, understanding material properties and what we can and can't do uh, in the cast iron. Can we machine it? Can we uh, machine it efficiently? Uh, and so, as I said, if you design it that way, you can see some pretty significant savings uh, on an operating cost basis if you were to put this into, uh, into a chiller. Uh, this is just an example of where we see our products. Uh, we're also the poster child for uh, the export initiative that uh, right now about 70% of what we're making is exported. Um, that varies month to month. This year it'll probably be a little bit lower. But uh, a lot of our customers in Europe, uh, a, a number of companies in Italy in particular, in, uh, in Eastern Italy is a lot of uh, chiller manufacturers where we have high penetration uh, cut company in the uh, UK, uh, some Chinese companies, um, even uh, uh, Johnson Controls is probably our largest uh, OEM customer in the US. These are the kinds of products that we see uh, our compressors in, and uh, in some of them you get uh, some pretty tight spaces, so anything we do to make them smaller and more efficient allows them to take material out of the coils, out of the fans, out of other things. So efficiency at the compressor saves the OEM lots of money in their fabrication. So that's what we're driving to. The more efficient we make the compressor, the more efficient these become and it allows them to save money. Uh, some of the partners that we deal with, um, and just some facts, uh, when we use the, the Department of Commerce uh, calculation methodology, we have a domestic content that's about 69, 70% depending on the model. Some customers now are, are more and more appreciative of that and knowing where their stuff comes from. Uh, I myself feel that way now. And uh, a lot of our partners in the area that we, uh, that we do some business with, some of these are ongoing suppliers. Some of them develop uh, tooling and machinery for us. Uh, some of them provide uh, uh, other, other devices to us. And we'd certainly like to uh, continue to do that. I personally believe that we can do this here in New York and uh, support the cluster. Um, just a quick interesting story. I'm helping my dad clean out his, his house. He's uh, finally retiring at 80. And uh, I finally got a hold of his Porter Cable drill. I've been wanting this thing for years. And this Porter Cable drill that we use regularly is made in Syracuse, New York. And I did a little research on that. And the formative years of Porter Cable happened with a guy named Art Emans, a chief engineer at the age of 21 years old. So I believe that innovation is in the DNA of this area. And certainly hope that we can uh, redo that. Um, some of the competencies we focus on are design. Uh, some of the guys that uh, uh, have a lot of patents, have developed a lot of proprietary tools. Uh, we're going to have to grow the next generation of these guys, so that's one of the things we're looking for is that. Uh, advanced machining, a lot of the uh, complexity of the product is built into these spirals and the method that we do that, the tools that we use, the speeds and the feeds, the, the material properties all go into making an efficient compressor. Unfortunately, we have to buy these from Japan, but uh, we try to keep this here in the US. Uh, the industry challenge for us is triple E, not Eastern equine encephalitis, for uh, the efficiency environment and economic pressures. Uh, everyone wants higher efficiencies. Everyone's focusing on green, green gases, low, low global warming potential uh, stuff, uh, the lead sustainability. But at the end, economic pressures. Our new facility we moved into, but we were under a time crunch. I wanted to use an air innovation um, chilled beam system, but we ran out of time. And we had to outsource some of the MEP work to a contractor. You know what we ended up with? My worst fear, a crappy rooftop system. <laughs> and so the economic pressures will always force people into making bad decisions. So we always got to be thinking about how to make this stuff less expensive, be more efficient, uh, and do it in a competitive way. And we're doing things to try to position our products, uh, expanding the operating envelopes to be able to make them uh, do uh, heat pump duty, for instance. Some of this is a little bit technical. 
a lot of work now going into variable speed drives. Everyone's all abuzz about variable speed. It's like calling it the Kleenex now. You say your product's got a VFD on it, poof, that's all they want to hear. Um, operating products with uh, higher efficiencies, this is one of our models. This green line, higher efficiency than all of the competitive products. Again, that gets us into products or into companies that may not have talked to us uh, in the past. And application innovations, we're, we're now in the process of patenting some uh, methodologies for uh, partnering two compressors together of, of dramatically different displacement that allows uh, for part load efficiency in multiple steps without having to use a frequency inverter and complex electronics and complex system schematics because of the way we designed the tubing and a couple other uh, innovative features in there and, and we're going to have RAM fabricating make this, this for us. So another little thing that we're trying to do but we need smart people to help us generate the next uh, version of those. Uh, and the last thing is, in terms of collaboration, one of our OEM customers uh, has projected that their growth in heating-only systems is going to be about three times the rate of growth of conventional uh, cooling and heating systems. And um, the U.S. Department of Energy says that uh, geothermal heating is, uh, is one of those areas of renewable energies that uh, they want to put a lot of emphasis on. So, well, I'm not a fan, I'm a fan of heat pumps, but I don't believe in using electricity to make heat. Um, so I think that's a waste of the, the value of the, the gas. I think there's an opportunity perhaps to combine all, all these things together using, uh, this, is a, this is a typical air conditioning system where you might have chillers and boilers, and sometimes you might have a heat recovery heat pump in there, but maybe there's an opportunity to package some bits or compression in a heat pump system to do low temperature heating with either a Fulton or a Utica boiler to do some high temperature stuff with some ICM controls tying it all together in some innovative internet enabled way and using radio frequencies from somebody else. So that was my pitch there for an idea that could be spearheaded by uh, the CEO. And as far as talent needs was the last thing you asked about was uh, yeah, we actually have a couple of uh, openings for a uh, skilled project engineer. Uh, we're looking for a high-level research kind of guy right now. And, uh, and then uh, on the operations side, a strategic buyer. And some of the skills that we look for are machine design, uh, advanced thermodynamics, uh, heat transfer, stress analysis, something like that. Um, so that's uh, hopefully what you wanted to hear. Was next the Any quick questions for Jim? No kind of questions about Bitzer's scroll? Going once, going twice.